All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, um, I think, um, Kathy, you're presenting uh, waiver A. Yes, I have uh, a waiver from Moorhead State University. They've uh, submitted a request to waive regulation 16 KAR 5040 section 5 for their student, Caleb Paul, who is an art education K through 12 major. Uh, the regulation states that when a candidate is pursuing a K through 12 certification, that the placement is split between elementary and middle school, high school setting. Due to the extraordinary circumstances and in light of COVID-19 pandemic, Rowan County has asked that their student teacher, Paul Caleb, not be placed in an elementary, or Caleb Paul, sorry, uh, not be placed in an elementary building. So he, they would like for his placement to be divided between a middle school and a high school. Okay. Uh, do you have, well, do we have a motion to... Chair, just real quick, um, okay. Kathy Jackson with, uh, this is Kathy Gunn's um, first full yes. meeting, um, okay. maybe in Crystal as well, if you all would kind of explain maybe where, um, why we have to, I know you just said because of the regulation, but kind of what we've done and then uh, why we have to give this to the waiver committee and what waiver committee usually does, I think might might be instructive. Okay. Do you want me to do that or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. When we have a uh, student teaching placement, I just do the student teaching. And if it doesn't apply to what the regulation says, or comp uh, they have to ask for a waiver. And that goes to the committee first, and then it's presented to the board. And the waiver committee will either support it or they will deny support. So. And uh, typically in these situations, we have approved these types of waivers, correct, Kathy? Yes. This is an odd one because, I mean, you can find elementary placements in music and in art, but because if you're in art or music, which is enrichment, you would have contact with every student in the building rather than just a class like you would have in middle school and high school. So that, and during this pandemic, I think that's what they're trying to avoid. Do you all have any questions for Kathy? Okay, then I need a, a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, do I have a second? And Kathy, I guess you're going to have to second <laughs> if you if you approve it anyway. Kathy got it right. Yes. I can't. Okay. Great. Right. We might have to go by my middle name because this is going to get confusing. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> yeah. It's Chanel. And I go by Chanel at school, so that's fine with me. Okay. <laughs> That'll make life easier. And yes, I do second the motion. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, so we have the motion. Any further questions or discussion? All right. If you approve the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Or you can raise your hand. That's good, Kathy Gunn. <laughs> okay. Those opposed, no. All right. Then the motion carries. All right. Waiver two. Uh, okay. This you. is also this is also from Moorhead State University, and uh, they submitted a request for that same section uh, for their student, Caitlin. Gatian, I have no idea how to say her name. Uh, she is a music K through 12 major, and it's the exact same situation. So the, uh, it, but it's Boyd County, and Boyd County has asked that they place her in a middle and a high school situation for their student teaching experience. So, any questions? All right, then I need a motion. I make a motion that we approve the uh, waiver for Caitlin G. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Kathy Gunn, do you have a second? Yes, second. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Uh, any further discussion or questions? All right. If you approve the motion, uh, please signify by saying aye or raise your hand. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Uh, those opposed, no. All right. The motion carries then. Uh, waiver C. This is me again. Uh, no surprise. It's the exact same motion. And it's for Natalie Gatian, who I'm um, sure is the twin of the other. And she's a K through 12 music major also. And she will be going to Boyd County. They've asked that her placement be in middle school and high school rather than the elementary building. So do we have any questions? And I will I will present this more formally at the board meeting. So, all right. Then I need a motion. Make a motion. I yeah. second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Questions? All right. If you approve the uh, uh, waiver C, signify by saying aye. I'll raise your hand. Okay. Those opposed, no, or raise your hand. All right. Thank you. <laughs> waiver D. Good morning. Okay. Uh, waiver D is uh, requested by Fairview Independent Schools um, on behalf of Carrie Price. So this waiver is a waiver of 16 KAR 2120. Um, of the section that limits the number of emergency certificates that a teacher can have. Under, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, under 2120, a, <clears throat> a, school, a person can have a second emergency certificate if the first emergency certificate was issued for either less than 50% of the teacher schedule or for if it was issued after February 15th of the school year. In this case, Carrie Price had a previous emergency certificate during the 17-18 school year for less than 50% of her schedule and gifted. So the district then submitted for a second emergency certificate under the regulation for the 18-19 school year for gifted, uh, which was also less than 50% of her schedule that year. Um, in this case, Ms. Price has since enrolled in a gifted education program and is on the, the two-year probationary certificate for gifted. But now, the district needs a third emergency certificate. This would be the first waiver request of this that the district has asked for um, because they need her to fill in for the remainder of the school year uh, as a library media specialist. Um, she plans to enroll in the library media specialist program. And once she's in the program, there is the library uh, media specialist recruitment program, and there is a certificate that can carry her forward until she. Um, until she can uh, finish that program for three years. Um, but in this case, the district is requesting a third issuance of the emergency certificate, but it's the first waiver that they have requested in this case. And Crystal, Any questions? Crystal, if I remember correctly, I think we've had similar types of things that we have approved because they are working toward the... Yeah. <clears throat> not not exactly like this one, but yes, yeah, similar when they are when they've got a plan in place and they're working towards um, completion. And I've I've ex you know talked to the superintendent about this, like kind of what needs to happen next for the district, so they wouldn't have to request a, a future waiver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is Josh still with us? I lost his picture. I don't know. Josh, are you still online? I think he just tried to answer, but we couldn't, yeah. couldn't hardly hear him. He did say he was having issues. He may have yeah. to join by his phone. <clears throat> Okay. Hey, I'm back. Oh, okay, good. All right. Okay, so uh, we need a, a motion for waiver D. I make a motion that we grant the waiver for um, emergency certification for the, um, until she gets the alt certification program. Okay, thank you, Kathy Gunn. <laughs> uh, and I need a second. I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Josh. Any further discussion or questions? 
Um, do we have something in place if she doesn't get accepted to the media specialist out certification program? Well, at this point, what I explained to the superintendent, because there there is another pathway called the proficiency evaluation, um, and that would be the only other route that she could pursue. But the school media librarian recruitment program, once the person has been admitted to that program, because technically it's not really an alternative certification program. It's a traditional program, but it's an advanced program for already certified educators. They have to have at least nine semester hours of coursework that counts towards that program. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sherry, but EKU has that program. Aren't they one of the the universities that has that program, the school media? Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure they do. And yeah, EKU does also. And so when the person has completed at least three courses from the program, and it can be coursework that they've previously, previously completed that counts as transfer credit, then they qualify for a one-year probationary certificate. And then that certificate can be renewed for two additional years. So it's very similar to an alternative certification program, but it doesn't have that tag of alternative certification. Um, in the event that in the event that somebody doesn't pursue the coursework or doesn't, it just doesn't apply for admission to the program. Um, I don't see why, you know, somebody who's a certified teacher already wouldn't qualify for admission unless they just didn't follow through with it. Then the only option is emergency certification, which at this point, you know, they've, she, she would have exceeded her, her options for emergency certification without a waiver. Any other questions? Okay, then we have a motion and a second to approve waiver D. If you approve the motion, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Those opposed, no. All right, then the motion carries. Uh, waiver E. Okay, waiver E is requested by um, JCPS teacher Courtney Harris. Um, this is a waiver request of the rank two regulation, which is 16 KAR 8020. Miss um, Harris is enrolled in U of L's program for middle school social study certification. Um, she has a previous master's degree in public administration, and she's requesting that that previous master's degree be counted as a content area degree um, towards a social study certification. Um, our practice has been that if a person enters an option six program and they have a master's degree that's in the content area for which they're certified, that they are eligible to go ahead and receive um, the the, the the rank two while they're in the temporary provision or while they're in the alternative certification program. Um, and for the most part, that's not been an issue, but then occasionally you'll have people that have these master's degrees in a gray area that's kind of in the um, the content area, but maybe not fully in the content area, um, which is where we are um, here. We did have a, for those of you that weren't involved uh, or weren't on the waiver committee previously, I believe it was in 2018, we had a similar circumstance where we had an option six candidate for LBD special ed certification who had a master's in re rehabilitation rehabilitation counseling and the board in that case had approved um, to accept the degree for towards a rank change but not until the option six program was completed so that was the closest uh, previous example I could find to this one so uh -huh. I so go ahead, sorry. Oh, so, uh, so how closely is a <laughs> master's in public administration and content matching middle school social studies? It doesn't seem like it would. So I looked at the transcript here and let me get down, scroll down in the documents to the transcript. Um, a social studies teacher 
obviously can teach content in history, government, political science, sociology, psychology, economics. Um, there's probably there's probably a, a one or two in there that I am um I'm forgetting. I did see in her master's degree, um, she does have a couple econ classes in there. Um, it's a lot of public policy. It's a lot of um, the policy process, financial management. Um, like I said, this one, this is one that I expressed to the district that this one's kind of on the fence. It could go either way. Um, and and Ms. Harris did want to at least pursue trying um, to see if it could be approved uh, for the rank two. Um, but again, she does have a couple courses in there for economics, which does fall underneath the um, social studies content. And the rest of it is, um, you know, you, end up, you all, I believe, have the transcript there and the, the documents as well. And you can kind of look at the course number or the course names in there just, you know, to see without me having to, you know, unless you need me to read them down, down the list. Do you all have more questions or do you feel comfortable at this point making a motion? I feel comfortable making a motion to approve. <laughs> okay. uh, and maybe because I'm a social studies teacher and uh, a lot of the policy stuff goes along with government. So, okay. Do we have a second? I'm sorry, I missed that discussion I, with my computer lagging out. I, I don't feel comfortable. Okay, we. Uh, um, okay, we I, do I have can. a. But we have a motion to approve waiver E, Josh. But Crystal can. Uh, she can share again because we sure. certainly want you to have all the information. Right. Absolutely. So with, and I'm not sure where you dropped out at, Josh, but. Um, Ms. Harris's Matt previous master's degree is in public administration. There is some coursework in her degree that's specifically specific to economics, which is a subcontent area of social studies. Um, this degree is in one of those gray areas. If it had been a master's degree in history, we wouldn't be here in, in this, you know, waiver committee, Matt. We would have already made that determination. But where a lot of that coursework is public policy, um, and is not, it's kind of in that gray area, but it, as uh, Ms. Gunn did, you know, did mention it, you know, in her interpretation, it does fall under the area of government. So the determined area, you know, the, the request that's being asked for here is, can this degree count as her rank two while she's going through her MAT program? So when she finishes the program, she would finish up with a rank one um, but she would be able to be paid as a rank two teacher while she's in the program is what the ultimate goal is here. So Josh, Kathy made a motion to approve waiver E. Uh, I do need a second. We can also go into some discussion, but whatever you think. That'll, that'll work. Uh uh, Kathy, being a social studies teacher, uh, my, my wife's a social studies teacher, so uh, I, I trust Kathy's uh, expertise there, so I'll, I'll make a second. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion or questions? Kathy, I have a question for you. Kathy Gunn, I have a question for you. Um, so on the policy um, as you as you look at her packet and transcripts, you feel comfortable that it covers a lot of content that a social studies teacher would need or not? That's not my thinking is about the type of thinking it takes in order to earn her degree and then couple that with the program she's going through now and the amount of studying she has to do to pass the praxis, which will force her to learn the content. So the type of thinking necessary for that policy applies to government and how governments operate and how rules are rules and all that stuff. So that's my thinking. OK. All right. That's great insight. Thank you. In, any other discussion or questions? Okay, if you approve mo uh, the motion, 
uh, for to approve waiver E, please signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Those opposed, no. Okay, the motion carries. All right, I believe um, that's everything we have. And uh, anything else, Crystal or Kathy, from you all? I have nothing else. All Thank right. Thank you all. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Rob, anything else for this group? No, I just, I really appreciate the conversation and uh, you all really considering from some different angles, these waivers. And I agree, I think, especially um, in a teacher shortage and when we're not requiring masters, if we have people who are advancing their studies that in some, maybe some different ways that support their, their learning and their, um, their, their content knowledge. I appreciate the consideration for those candidates. So with that, that'll give you what about eight or nine minutes to yeah. refill your coffee cup before we're back in for the long haul. Thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thanks to our team for having everything ready. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks Crystal and Kathy. You're thanks very welcome. you all.